Bug Snacks, this year's indie darling? Or is it Hades? Well, regardless, Bug Snacks, a game that caught a lot of attention early in the year for being debuted as a PS5 game and having a more humorous and unique looking presentation, and of course, that one song. And given the way it was shown, I didn't think I would be playing it because, well, I had no intentions of getting a PS5. But turns out it's also on PC. And it's cheap? Well, that's an oddly nice surprise. So, what is a Bug Snacks? The story of Bug Snacks takes place in a mysterious island where the animals are food. Well, to be more precise, literal prepared food like cakes, ice cream, or smoked ribs. And when the inhabitants of the island, which are also weird looking, but that's just how characters look in this world, eat them, they can turn their body parts into the specific bug snacks. And also, because they're food, and it's said to taste good, which I'm inclined to believe given most of them are sweets and other very unhealthy foods. The premise here is that you've been invited to report on this island and its strange creatures, but when you arrive, you realize the character that invited you, Elizabeth, went missing and the characters living on the islands have had a falling out and your job is to get them all together again while also figuring out what happened to Elizabeth. And of course, this can only be done by catching bug snacks. And that's the core of the game. In trying to convince these characters to get back together, you'll be given quests to catch certain bug snacks. While the cast of characters is not huge, it is surprisingly big for the scope of the game. And each one has a very distinct and very quirky personality that works into this bug snack world. For example, Gramble is a small guy and he doesn't eat the bug snacks. He has them as pets. While Wiggle, she likes bug snacks for the fashion side of it. As I said before, one of the bug snacks main features is body modification. The story overall is satisfying even if it's definitely written for kids. It exists in that way that even while it is for kids, there's a lot of reference for adults. Even if some of the reference can be kind of eye-rolling, they definitely make some meme reference that are already outdated and are only bound to be more outdated as the years go by. And that's just kind of the frugal nature of memes. They just don't tend to stand the test of time. So putting them in your story is often more of a miss than a hit. To keep on this more friendly and kids game vibe, catching bug snacks is not done by combat, but by setting traps. Your arsenal will start very basic with just a snack trap, which allows you to set up a simple trap to catch bugs as they pass by. But as the game progresses, not only would you get more gadgets to use, but they will also have a lot more synergy between them. And a big part of the game will be figuring out that synergy. And that feels good. For example, you can find a burning bug snacks and use a gun that shoots food to lure said bug snack to a trap that works as a catapult, throwing him in a body of water to put out the flames and be able to catch him. In other situations, you could have a bug snack that doesn't let you get close to it. What you can do is use the lure for a bigger animal on that smaller animal and get the bigger animal to kind of run after it and stun him, making you able to catch it. It's a game that pushes for creativity and for kids it's great, but for adults it can become very apparent very early that most bug snacks only have a small set number of ways of being caught without breaking the game. Which can happen, I did have quests break on me. It was weird as they would happen and then the quest just would not work and then I would go and do other quests and then I would go back to it and suddenly it would work. Thankfully this only happened to me with side missions and not the main one but I have read of people breaking main missions so be aware. Technically this game definitely feels a bit unpolished. The frame rate is also a bit odd, it has a tendency to drop to almost unplayable levels on the main hub where you are trying to gather all of the characters, which wouldn't be such a big problem if this was just a hub, 
but some of the missions do take place in this area and well it's not pleasant. The game has 8 areas plus the hub and what I would call 4 biomes, by that I mean 4 distinct ecosystems. For example we have a snowy zone and then a desert zone and each biome has 2 areas or maps. In total there are 100 bug snacks and that was surprisingly a lot, but it surely helps that a lot of them are also just slight variations of each other, but also catching them all definitely felt quick and rewarding. It just has very good pacing and again it makes you feel smart at times, especially if you're a kid. There are also bosses, but surprisingly enough these bosses only happen in side quests, which was an odd choice, but given how compelling the game is to 100% I didn't mind it much. Side quests are given in the main hub or village I guess would call, usually by characters you have brought back to said village by the main story. And given the shortness and collect-a-thon feeling of the game, getting all the bug snacks and going for a completionist run is very compelling and honestly shouldn't take you more than 8 to 10 hours to do it. Overall, Bug Snacks is a great game for kids that adults can enjoy. It's a relaxing, humorous game, even if all the humor doesn't land. And I'm giving this one a 7 out of 10. And it's low price, 20 bucks, it's easy to recommend. Just take into consideration the possible bugs, no pun intended, and frame rate problems before going into it. Anyways, regardless, I hope this review was informative, it helped you decide, and in some way, I hope you subscribe, and leave a like, and a comment, and I would appreciate it, and um, bye!